Show me your heart. Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love Cause I need some proof of love I want to talk about Celsius Network. They're doing a really cool thing, trying to revolutionize the way we think about financial services. Basically, they're offering their users up to 10% annual interest on their crypto deposit, and there's no secret to how they're doing it. That 10% comes from them sharing 80% of their profits rather than the minuscule percentage the banks share. Celsius is giving our users $10 in BTC when they make a deposit of $200 or more in crypto or stable coins when they use promo code LOVE. Go to Celsius network. Hey everybody and welcome to Proof of Love. Thanks for tuning in this week. We're missing Stephanie, which is unfortunate, but you've got me and Lauren and we're going to do some Q&As for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about some uh, questions around marriage, uh, but first and foremost, thank you to our sponsor, Celsius Network. I uh, appreciate you guys sponsoring the uh, Proof of Love show and uh, welcome to the show today. Lauren, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm excited to be here. I think we have some really cool topics. Well, yes, I, I think that we do. Um, how's California? I'm jealous of your warmth. Uh, New York has finally gotten cold officially. We are not fans. I heard it is 92 degrees today. We're having a freakish heat wave, it, but it's not even pleasurable. When it's like 75, it's amazing, but now it's just freakishly hot. But hey, I'm not complaining. I've had 160 winters in New York. This is fantastic. 160? How old are you? I'm 160. Oh, I thought it was 162. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, Don't the- age me. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So wedding bells are in the air. There's lots of people getting engaged. I have some friends that are getting hitched. And it kind of got me thinking about this question. And it sort of, we're going to expand it a little bit. But, you know, marriage has obviously changed quite a bit. You moved across the country to be with the love of your life, which uh, people used to do that. But you started living together. And the question that I have is marriage and living together. Do you think you can live together first? Is that a good idea? Are you basically setting yourself up uh, for an exit plan? Like, how, how, what do you think about uh, marriage and living together? So I have a lot of feelings about this. I used to be the kind of person that couldn't believe that anybody would get married before they lived together. I mean, firmly couldn't believe it. I thought it was completely mind boggling. You have to know how somebody is on a day-to-day basis, right? Like it just, to me, seemed like the normal thing to do. But that was also kind of a modern idea as we were growing up because in our parents' generation, they didn't all live together. They got married. They often went to college together and then got married right after college. So I feel like at the time when I was thinking that it was kind of a radical idea, right? Like you live together, you figure out if it's right, and then you get married. But as kind of shifts have been happening in our culture with what's happening in relationships, a lot of people never getting married, just living together forever and being really happy about it. There are a lot of things going on that I think are affecting kind of the initial, the initial question, like, should you live together? Should you not live together? For me personally, I've changed my, my feeling on it. And it's just because of this past experience. I mean, we, Christian and I barely were together for five months before we got engaged, which seems mind blowing. Right. And it seems so out of the ordinary, especially for me when I was with somebody for 10 years and we never got engaged, but I felt like doing the long distance thing and him coming to me for a couple of weeks, me going to him for a couple of weeks, we sort of saw how we were living, even though a lot of people would say that's in a honeymoon way or, you know, it was in a vacation type way. When you're together for two weeks and you're working while somebody's visiting and vice versa, you are seeing how they are every day. We did that from day one. Granted, it was an enormous adjustment when I actually moved in with him and it actually was a day to day but i wouldn't i wouldn't take it back i think it really goes on a couple to couple decision for us it was fine to not live together first but i think for a lot of couples it's important to live together first 
I'll give you an example. I can think of quite a few couples, one in particular, who were dating for a really, really long time before they got engaged, before they lived together, but they would see each other like once a week. That's it. To me, if you're seeing each other every single day and you're having sleepovers for two months, you know that person's habits way better than you do somebody you've been dating for 10 years and you've seen them once a week. To me. So I think it really kind of depends on the situation, right? Like you could be with somebody forever, but you don't really spend that much time with them. So you kind of have to live together if, if you want to do the living together before you get married. I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I, I always thought you had to. I, I kind of don't think you have to anymore. I think I've become that like ridiculous cliche of a person that's like, when you know, you know, when it's your person, you just know it's your person. I think that's true. And I think the habits that you have, you know, once you live together, you make it work when you're together. But I don't know, you might totally disagree because I disagreed with that viewpoint for 39 years. I don't know. What do you think? Like, could you imagine marrying somebody you hadn't lived with first? Well, I've never lived with a guy now that I think about it. Um, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Like even with Why your is perfect- it so hard? Because you have to clean up your mess? No, I'm such I'm a total neat freak, but it's hard just because you don't have your own space anymore. It's it's the same kind of compromise, in my opinion, as when you enter a relationship. I mean, it's not just you anymore. You have somebody else in your space. Like you're if you want to spend time together, you're organizing all your free time to give yourself free time, to make sure they have free time and then have your free time together. It's just, it's a, it's just a big difference. I mean, when I lived alone and I was with Christian, I would do whatever the heck I wanted to do all night. Like I could come home, order food, watch movies for five hours, talk to him on the phone, go to bed. I don't do that anymore. Now it's like, get home from work. We have dinner together. Maybe I'm home late. Maybe he's home late. We need to figure out the timeline. We want to spend time together before we go to sleep. I amended my schedule so that I can go to bed with him early, even though I'm a night owl, so that we have that time together the next day. It's just, it's just constant compromise. It's what are you going to eat? Where are you going to go food shopping? What are you going to do on the weekends? Do you want to spend all your time together? Do you want to hang out with other friends? Do you want to be that couple that hangs out with other couple friends. They have families. Do you want to spend time with their family? Do you not want to spend time with their family? Vice versa. It's just like, do you like the same TV shows? Do you like the same music? Do you like the same food? It's just, it's just constant compromise. It's worth it when it's with the right person. Okay. So there's a couple things that come up, right? Number one, the, the danger of getting married these days, which we'll, we'll table that. But do you think that You know, I I kind of feel like maybe if you are engaged to somebody and you're married to them, you're almost stuck with them. And if you don't have that thing binding you, maybe you would quit a little bit early. Do you know what I mean? Not that you should be forced into something, but if you can just walk away because you don't like the way that they don't make the bed in the morning or whatever weird thing that bothers you. I don't know. I mean, maybe that means you should never have been together in the first place. Like maybe it wasn't meant to be, but there's something to be said, I I think about preserving the magic, right? And like, you don't get all the goodies, like me cleaning the house until you put the ring on this thing or daddy, (laughs) Um, you know, but then you've got the other hand where, where there's like a little bit of a practicality. Um, So yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like I don't know. I'm not so sure about living together. It seems so logical, but something about that seems very unromantic. And also it's almost like a prenup. Oh yeah. What do you think yeah. about prenups? We should well, talk about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to talking about prenups. I, for me, I personally think that the, the ideal situation, I know this isn't right for everybody, but the kind of ideal situation is that maybe you've discussed getting married and you know it's about to come, or you have discussed getting engaged, like you've looked at rings together, and then that's when you make the jump to living together. It's kind of like, I don't want to say like you're tied to each other, but you kind of are. I mean, I, you and I both have a couple of friends who are very, very serious with their significant other. They've been living together with them forever and are not married and are really happy that way. 
but that to and, me is just weird though. Like I want to understand why somebody wouldn't want to. And I don't know. Well, I, I mean, maybe it's the fear of the, of, you know, the divorce or, or I don't know what happened. Yeah. I think a lot of people have that fear. There's this like deep ingrain, and this is not for our friends in particular, but I've heard this. I mean, I feel like Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell said something like this because they've been together for like 50 years and never got married and they seem super happy. But I think for a lot of people saying that you're getting married has that reverse magic romantic effect. So to them living together, but knowing that they don't have to be together and there's not a legal piece of paper, kind of has that opposite effect for them. It actually is a turn on. It keeps them, it keeps that magic in the marriage. It keeps, uh, not the marriage, the living together, the relationship. It keeps them knowing that the other person is there because they want to be there, not because it's difficult to get divorced. And I can see that too. I really, I get that too. But I think you have to either not care about getting married at all. You both have to be the kind of people that maybe you've both been divorced and you don't want to do it again. Or you have to be incredibly confident. And we're just not all that confident that we're going to be with somebody for 10 years and they're not going to just pick up one day and leave because it's easy. Right? I mean, the, to feel like someone will, be, someone will be there no matter what, even without a ring, that's like a pretty amazing feeling. That's a pretty priceless, special feeling. But I don't know that we all just have the confidence and the security to have that. Well, people also change. I mean, yeah. you know, people get married and then they, you know, the wind blows and all of a sudden, I, I don't know. I feel like people leave marriages very early Yeah, in general. And so I guess my, my aversion to the living together also extends to that. It's just like people, it's not always easy. It's not always sexy. It's not always fun. Just suck it up for the greater good. I mean, not completely where you're just sacrificing yeah. yourself, but I don't know. I mean, everybody just wants the next hot, fun thing, and it just seems lame. So I don't know. I'm always yeah. like the conservative on this show. Who who would have thought? Um, <laughs> I, I think it's but- hilarious. I would have <laughs> never expected it. But I don't – I mean, I, I mean, know. our society like- right now is so gross, though. You know what I mean? Like everything is yeah. just devolved so badly that it makes that – tradition more attractive and it also you know especially like with children i don't know i mean i get it mommy and daddy aren't happy well suck it up mommy and daddy because johnny's gonna end up in rehab if mommy and daddy decide to go and date their you know secretaries like i don't know (laughs) get over yourselves people you know I, i don't know well, I think a lot of people tend to, and, and I'm saying this to somebody who is getting married to somebody. I mean, now it's been a year and a half, so we kind of have delayed our engagement to enjoy this time of getting to know each other. But I'm saying this to somebody who got engaged within six months. And I do think for the most part, for the most part, maybe we're the exception to the rule in a lot of circumstances, but for the most part, I think people don't really get to know each other in the way they should before they get married. And then it's like, ah, ew, this is who I married. This sucks. Let's, let's get divorced. And it's maybe if they got to know each other more and maybe it's not a matter of time of getting to know each other. It's just being open and talking about things and like, what do you want? What do you not want? What are you interested in? Do you want kids? Do you not want kids? How do you believe in, I, I don't know. There's, there's just so many things that need to be discussed before people get married that they just still don't do. I stopped following a lot of people on Instagram because I would notice all of these super religious, like 23 year old influencer girls who are getting married and live on like another planet. It's like, it's, they're marrying this guy, but they don't even know each other. I could see it from reading the posts and it's all about about like, I'm, I'm devolving here, but the point is, I think it's just about getting to know each other. If you know each other well enough and you know you're a right match, you'll make it work. Whether you get married, whether you live together first, whether you don't, it's just, I don't think a lot of people know who they're getting married to. What and do you think of I like- I think that's kind of this- No, go ahead. Well, I think that's why logically, like we were both saying, logically, it always make it seems to make the most sense to say, well, you'll live together first, right? Then you'll get- to- to know each other. That's an easy way to get to know each other more deeply. But you could also live together and still not get to know each other in a deeper level and still not talk on a deeper level. So 
I think it's just another thing. I think it comes down to the same cliche that I probably say on every episode. And it's about that kind of deeper communication. If you're having that deeper communication, whether you've been together for three months or you've been together for 15 years, whether you've lived together or you haven't lived together, you're going to be able to make it work if you know what the other person wants in a relationship. I think some people live together to stall you know, like, oh, we'll live together. And maybe it's the girl or the guy who just isn't ready for marriage. And it's like kind of a test run, you know, in their mind, like, well, we'll live together and we'll see how it goes. I think that's, I think that's normal, but I think it's also a little bit dangerous. I, I've done it. I know it's a little dangerous. So I think at the end of the day, it really just comes down to that same kind of communication and getting to know each other on a deeper level, like a real deeper level. And I still just don't think people do that, especially in our society, in our culture now. People don't get to know each other at all. They follow each other on social media. What do you think about um, like a couple, you know, in there's like religious traditions where you go and talk to, you know, your priest or your rabbi and they kind of give you advice about marriage. I mean, that that seems old fashioned, but I do like it as a concept. Like, you know, I have yeah. a friend and she's thinking about marrying this guy and, and she's unsure. And I'm like, well, why don't you guys go and talk to somebody? But that's sort of fallen out of fashion. Uh, if anything, I think people go to a therapist now. What do you think? I mean, are you guys yeah. doing anything like that to train yourselves for marriage? We're not, but I, we've talked about it before. And we've, we've said, both of us have said separately that we'd be completely open to going to therapy together just to kind of make sure we have everything ironed out and we know where, where we're coming from. I mean, we've both been through very, very serious relationships. So I think we have more of a, like we had an idea up front of what we did and didn't want. But I do, I love the idea of going to talk to somebody, you know, it's hard with religion, especially with organized religion, because I feel like they're, whether it's Judaism or Christianity or whatever it is, there's just a lot of different, like, there's a lot of different ideology about what makes a marriage work. So what makes me a little uncomfortable is how our society is going so backwards with conservatism that I think, I think talking to somebody in a religious aspect sounds nice and it could be great if it's the right kind of person, but I don't know how much it's going to really help. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe well, it why will. wouldn't it help though? I mean, you know, Sure, you don't want to talk to your priest about getting it on, right? Or your rabbi or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, they are sort of prepared for some of the less exciting parts of marriage, right? Because when you're yes, getting married, yes. you're hot and heavy. Like, it's going to be perfect. And people don't even talk about finances, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's an important um, step, but I don't think it necessarily has to be a religious figure. Um, yeah, but just someone. But just someone. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Do you feel like you would want to live like you personally, and you don't have to answer, but just out of curiosity, I mean, would you want to live with somebody first? Do you feel like that's important? Especially as someone who travels a lot, you have a different kind of like your schedule's alternative. Do you I think, think it's that it's very romantic? No. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of like, I don't know. It just, it seems like you're giving away uh, a lot of the benefits of living with a woman and you're not getting any of the goodies necessarily like i don't know none of the obligation and the the safety and the obligation i think is is what women are looking for even though you know there's never any safety in that situation i mean i would go i would go a step further so what do you think about um i have a a female colleague who (laughs) wants to live with somebody have a baby with them and then decide if they want to get married and to me that's oh, really wow. backwards. Like, yeah. I don't know. I would want to get married and then have a kid, not like move in with me, then have a kid, then maybe get married. But for financial purposes, I mean, we touched on this a little bit earlier. You know, if one person is a little bit wealthier than the other, uh, you know, a divorce is extraordinarily expensive and it could be a financial risk. Yeah. But you're also bringing in a kid into the world. So as much stability as you can bring in seems really important. It just seems very unthought out to me. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it seems, I mean, it, everything is different for everyone as I've learned as we've gotten older, but it seems a little risky. I mean, 
unless she's really financially able to take care of this baby on her own and emotionally, I mean, have they talked about what happens if it doesn't work out? If it doesn't work out, is this guy going to be in the child's life as his father and they're just not going to get married? Like there's so many what ifs in this scenario. I don't, well, I'm sure that that, they think that he will be, you know what I mean? But that's the thing. Like it just seems very haphazard to me. And then, you know, I, I know another gal and you know, she got married and the guy, he doesn't want to have children now. And they agreed that they would probably have kids, but they didn't really expressly discuss it. And so now See, TikTok, her, her yeah. reproductive years are just ticking away. And this guy is just, you know, I mean, it's very hard to leave someone when you're married to them. And then all of a sudden you find out this deal breaker situation much later in the game. Yeah. I mean, but that's the thing too. I, and no blame on her whatsoever. I've done things like this too, but that's exactly what I was saying about talking about it. Like if you definitely want kids and he's like, I don't know, maybe I will in a few years, that's a giant freaking red flag. Like don't marry that guy. If you for sure want kids and he's saying maybe to me, that needs to be really discussed. Like kids are a huge thing to talk well, wait, about. Well, wait, what if she you... didn't know? What if she thought maybe good? You know what I mean? Because sometimes uh, that happens. That's tricky. Yeah, yeah. Then right. in that in that case, that's really, I do feel for her. Do they have to her. divorce? You know, what do you do in that situation? Yeah, I really feel for her. That is that is freaking tough. Like if she wasn't sure and she just thought, yeah, maybe, and then decided she did. Oh God, that's hard. That's really hard. I don't know. I mean, man. It, I would say, God, this is so, it's so challenging, but I think at the end of the day, there's only kind of a small window of when you can have kids. And if you for sure want to have kids and your mate suddenly decides that they don't want to. You got to say adios. You gotta, yeah, you got to I leave. mean, what else are you going to do? You can't stay with that person. Then you're just never going to have kids. Yeah. And it's like even, and it, I mean, I, I think it's probably just not the right person for you anyway. It doesn't make it any easier. That is a really hard situation. That's really, really tough. I'm getting like choked up just thinking about being in that kind of situation and how much that must really, really suck for her. Like, man, and for him too. I don't know if he's a dick or not, or if he's a nice guy and he just is probably just as confused. You know, maybe he's like, I thought you didn't know. And either way, it's a tricky situation, but yeah, I mean- there's well, only... I think that if he knows that he doesn't want the child, he needs to stop leading her on. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Because yeah. he's, he's being sort of noncommittal. And I think that that's really, you know, I mean, how do you, how do you stay noncommittal about a kid? You know? That's, yeah. It's just, I yeah. think it's cool because then you're wasting her years. And then what? She's just going to get older and uglier. And then she's going to have to try and find a guy being all single and like desperate looking for a baby seed. I mean, that yeah. sounds even worse. So. I don't know. What's Have her- your conversations, everybody, with your partner in advance, because I don't know how to how to resolve that situation either. I've been thinking about it a lot, but yeah. I think that she's just got to, you know, cut the cord. I mean, how do you stay with somebody like that? They're wasting I your think, life. It's literally I think the you're point right. of life is pro- procreation. Again, if that's something that you really want and you're sure about it, again, like you can't have babies forever. There is a very finite amount of time that, that women can have babies for. And if she's coming towards the end of that time, like that is just not fair to keep her waiting. It's not fair. That's something that if she doesn't do it and she stays with him waiting, she will regret so heavily for the rest of her life and end up despising him. And I guarantee you they'll probably get divorced anyway, because how could she ever be happy if that's something that she really really wants. That's a big deal. That's not like moving to another, which is uh, moving to another country is a big deal too, but that's having a child or not having a child. That is, that is life. That is a big deal. Oh man. I don't know. I'm with you. I would say she probably has to leave him. I know. What a bummer, right? Yeah. It's so, it's so sad, but that's the thing too. I mean, these things do need to kind of be really discussed in person, but again, people change things change, life changes. It's like, you kind of have to roll with the punches and be on the same page for these big life things to make well, it work. Well, also, like, I think that kids are just something that our generation doesn't really think about that much. You know what I mean? Like previous generations, it was such a main focus. 
I know a ton of people who are like, ah, kids, I could take them, I could leave them. Uh, I do find that as my friends get older, they are leaning toward having them after all, even the ones who hate them. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that that's, frankly, as I get older, I think that that's a healthy thing. It's like, what are you going to do? You're all yeah. old. You're not going to go to the club. You know what I mean? You need some like little kids running around so you could bother them because what else are you going to do with your time? I mean, I don't know. I travel is exhausting. I travel all the time. I can't travel. You do. <laughs> you do. I think, I don't know. I mean, I think in my experience, it's been different. I, I probably have like two friends that don't have kids. Everyone I know had kids. They all were like getting married by the time they were 30, they had kids. By the time they were 34, they were on their second. Like, I feel like there's, I'm watching kind of this whole non-traditional world kind of from the outside of the bubble of people I know. And I'm probably considered one of the non-traditional people. I mean, I'm 40. I'm not married yet. I met my person. We don't have kids. But I, it's strange because I kind of see everyone I know our age or like in our age range, with the exception of maybe three or four people that have kids, live in the suburbs, have like have kind of this overly traditional thing, but then I'm also really part of the younger culture and I'm watching them not do it at all. It's really weird. I feel like our whole society is super split. I mean, I live in Orange County. It's basically like living in the Midwest in the 1960s. Like nobody is married without kids here. It just like doesn't exist. It's not a thing. Maybe in LA, but out here, it's not a thing. It's very, very strange. But I mean, there's also people that are on their third marriages out here by the time they're 43, and no one thinks that's weird either. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I do firmly believe- Well, marriage believe- is very expensive. That's the other thing, right? I mean, like every yeah. time you have one of those parties, it's like 50 grand down the freaking tube. What the hell is that about? You know, yeah, that's a all- nice business. It's, it's all like, it's super crazy. I just, the thing that I find interesting, and we can definitely touch on it deeper in another, in another episode, because there's so much to say about it. The people that I know that haven't had kids yet or who are unsure about kids are probably the ones that would be much much better parents than a lot of the people that are having kids, which is the craziest thing. And I wonder if it's an awareness of who you are that kind of (laughs) makes you aware of how hard the whole having kids thing is. Because I know plenty of friends who are amazing parents, wonderful people, like really, really good moms and dads. I also know plenty that are terrifying. (laughs) Like they don't like kids. They don't like kids, period. And it's like, they just had kids because that's what you do. And to me, that's terrifying because it's like, if you didn't want to have them, like, are you going to be a good parent? Like, are you just kind of moving along the cycle of like people doing what they think that they're supposed to do. I don't know. I have so many feelings on the topic of kids that I could probably talk about it for like three years, but I do think that there are a good amount of people that don't have kids that don't know if they want to have kids and very deeply regret it in the future. Yeah. I I mean, there's like a lot of people that just aren't having them, but I don't think it's particularly good because then you've got people in countries where they really can't afford to have children And then they're having a whole bunch of kids and then people in these like, you know, first world countries or whatever, they're just like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if I want one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Eh, Whatever. Anyway, (laughs) hopefully the world, the world population won't collapse anytime (laughs) soon. Although, you know, I've looked at studies and actually the world population is, is, is not growing the way that they sort of scare people. Really? It's actually diminishing. Yeah. Because of the amount of, uh, kids that people are having. I'll have to look it up for another, uh, for another episode. Cause I don't want to just randomly talk out of my butt about yeah, it. No, um, that would be, I would love to talk about that. I was surprised I at the, at the statistics around it. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, um, that's fascinating. Cause I do. Yeah. I think people are having less kids, but yeah. Well, yeah, but whole- only in, only in Western countries, like in the middle of, you know, Africa and like India and China. Well, I don't know about China, but they're having a lot of children in other places. Um, but hmm. I don't even think that that makes up for the loss. So it's interesting. I'll, 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 I'll share it sometime. Yeah, um, I would, I would love to read more about that and just talk more about that in general. It's, I have a lot to discuss from my trip to Japan that I absolutely loved and it definitely correlates with yeah, relationships. Well, you keep and, promising, you keep, you know, te- <laughs> teasing us with your Japan stories and nothing ever materializes. 
I know. We'll talk about it because I really want you guys to watch a short four-part series on Netflix that is very, very, Just want very you to watch integral. a short four-part video series <laughs> before we discuss it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's Queer Eye for the straight guy. It's the rebooted Queer Eye. They went to Japan. We'll talk about that. But okay, it's fine. Very- so if the audience wants to participate in that, they can go out and watch the Queer Eye for the Japanese guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's very fascinating but i i i think when we come back to like how things have changed and living together and taking it all a bit full circle i have a friend that i think did it kind of the right way and it was similar to what i did she had been with somebody for three years i think and they were moving in the direction of marriage he wanted to live with her at first it wasn't that it wasn't that he didn't want to marry her or he was trying to like push things off. And she, not not for any religious region, reason, and I touched on it before, she wanted to have that ring on her finger for security. And she said to him just bluntly, I'm happy to move in with you, but I'm also looking to get married. This is how old we are. I don't want to be living together for five years. If we get engaged, I'm happy to move in with you, live together before we get married. He was like, sounds awesome. He wanted to marry her. Didn't matter got engaged, lived together for two years, got married, amazing couple. So I think it's, you know, I think they both put their needs on the table and what they wanted, they compromised and it worked out. So if you are going to live together first, maybe think about why you want to do it and what is the importance for you. And if you're going to pop out any children, very important thing to to work out in advance. Yes, definitely discuss whether or not you want to have kids. Yeah, my God, yes. Okay. I don't, I, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully our listeners uh, got something out of it. Are you guys, do you guys have a feeling about this? If you're listening, uh, do you know anybody who has a story about moving in, where it was a disaster, where it worked out, where it maybe saved them from marrying the wrong guy? Who knows? Uh, yeah. All of your questions can be submitted at proofoflovecast.com. Please check out our social media and share the show with people. We definitely depend on you guys to spread the word about the show. Uh, thanks, Lauren, for joining us today. Thank you so much to Celsius Welcome. Network for sponsoring uh, the Proof of Love show. And if you guys are interested in hearing a little bit more about politics and crypto stuff, go to thetatianashow.com. And thanks to our uh, friends over at LTB for sharing this with their audience. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Show me your heart. I know that it's beating. Tell me that you love me too. So I know your heart is true. Cause I need some proof of love. Cause I need some proof of love. Cause I need some proof of love. Thank you for listening to Proof of Love. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Proof of Lovecast. More episodes can be found at proofoflovecast.com. And make sure you leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends. Proof of Love has been brought to you by CryptomediaHub.com, a boutique marketing and PR agency for Bitcoin and beyond. You are listening to Proof of Love with Tatiana Moroz, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, and Lauren Kasovitz. This show may contain adult content, language, and humor and is intended for mature audiences. If that's not you, please stop listening. Nothing you hear on Proof of Love is intended as financial advice, legal advice, therapy, or really anything other than entertainment. Please take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. Oh, and if you're hearing us on an affiliate network, the ideas and views expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the network that you're listening on or of any of the sponsors or affiliate products that you may hear about on the show. 